we're here in Zolder, night before the start of the 2016 Cyclocross World Championships. Talking with Mark McConnell, member of Team Canada the, and Hot Sauce Cycling, um, member of the elite squad for Canada, elite men. So Mark, uh, first World Championships, I believe. Second World Championships, my apologies. So you, you, you know a little more what to expect now. Yeah, I was in uh, Tabra last year as my first Worlds, which I think about 50 to 60,000 still made the trip. There's a lot of Belgi super fans driving 900k, but uh, now that we're in Zolder, I think we can expect even more. So you've had a chance to ride the course now and get an idea of uh, what it's like here. Um, what's, what are your impressions, what are your opinions on, on, on how the race is going to go? This is my third time racing Zolder, uh, the first time in 2012 over the curse period, second time last year, well actually, sorry, fourth time, geez, okay, fourth time racing Zolder, so you think I'd get it by now, but um, so far it's dry, really fast, but I hear it's going to rain, so everything changes in the rain, but it's still a lot of pedaling, so even if you think it's going to be really heavy, you'll see a lot of guys running Grifos, all round tires just because of all the pedaling sections, so. So for you, what uh, what are the critical elements? I mean, you've got a lot of pavement, so there's gonna be some real speed, but then you've also got some steep climbs and so on in the dirt. So what do you think are gonna, are gonna be the, the, the critical portions of the course? I think there's a, there's a lot of really heavy power sections that you can easily get overworked, but I think there is recovery as well. You just have to really hone in on that, the areas where you can sit in a group like on the pavement and then try and attack them through the forest. Um, those really steep kickers near the end of the course was a new addition last year so it definitely changes things up. It's a real spike in power and uh, yeah I think it's really important to focus on your recovery when you come back onto the pavement after so ebb and flow I guess. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about hot sauce cycling. <laughs> Racing nickname turned fundraiser turned uh, well, I'd say we'd keep it right around there, a fundraising campaign that I've used to come back to Belgium year after year now. It's the second year in the making, along with some incredible sponsors back home. Um, largely Rob Pryor of Street Importing helped make this year happen, but yeah, every, every week I get a few more orders in the mail and it's just, it's really encouraging seeing people buy my caps and t-shirts as a way to support me racing over here and trying to make a go of it, so yeah. So is there an actual hot sauce that people can buy or is it just t-shirts and caps and stuff? People keep telling me I've got to come out with my own hot sauce and uh, maybe that's next year. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So for you, uh, you're racing Sunday. Uh, what, are, what are your goals? What will make it a, a satisfactory race for you? Um, so I've been here for the last three months slugging away and you know, top 50s in the World Cups were always kind of the goal. Started out really strong in Cogside with the 41st, um, and I've kind of been chasing and hovering around that bubble, the top 50, I should say. Um, but with Worlds, it's unique because you only send five or six riders uh, from every country, so the, the numbers are actually smaller. Um, so for me, a top 40 is definitely my, my goal. Uh, top 35 would be an ultimate day, I think, for me. So, yeah, we'll see. Well, good luck. Thank you.